Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, this puts you DIY, and I mentioned in last week's video that I was kind of experimenting with bringing art into Fusion 360 uh, to make these blank Euro rack panels. People will put these blank uh, panels that usually have, usually pretty artistic, depending on people's style, uh, that basically take up empty space on the rack so that you're not just looking into an empty case. It's purely for aesthetic. Um, so I 3D printed this one um, and I did it by bringing some art into Fusion on top of a 10 HP panel that I found on Thingiverse. Uh, and I kind of wanted to talk about just bringing art into Fusion in general uh, because it was a lot easier than I thought it'd be. Uh, so we're going to, uh, to do that. With the pandemic, people are really struggling right now. If you're one of the lucky ones, consider donating items, money, or food to your community's food banks, shelters, or other local programs. If you aren't sure where to start, resources will be down in the description. So it all starts with Inkscape, which is a free program. Uh, and all you're gonna do is you're just gonna open your art. And so the art that I would like to do today are these super fly lightning bolts and stars. And you just wanna, wanna open it. And I don't know why I made it like that, but that's okay. All right, so here's the art. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it basically a black and white image uh, that can be brought in as an SVG to Fusion. Uh, and the way you do that is you go to Path, Trace, Bitmap. And now there's a couple different like options on how to do it here. You have to select your image to trace um, and then, and so you're seeing your preview here. Now, this isn't picking up everything I want to show, so I like to kind of check around um, and click around until I get something good. So that's looking more like what I'd like to see. And you can also do multiple scans too. Okay, so after some noodling around, um, I just did the brightness cut off, uh, and so I've had these lightning bolts and stars pretty well defined. So now if I press OK, there it is. Um, however, one thing is that you want to get rid of the original image and bring back your bitmap image. And so now that you have this image kind of drawn out, and it's okay that there's some speckles because it's not going to matter in Fusion. You're going to go up to File and you're going to do Save As, Inkscape SVG, uh, we can name it Lightning, and Save. Now we're going to go into Fusion. So now in Fusion, what you want to do is you want to create a new sketch uh, and you want to put it on top of where you want your art to be. Uh, so now uh, you're then going to go into Insert and you're going to do Insert SVG and then you're going to insert the SVG that you just made. So now you can see it's kind of small uh, and I kind of want it to be the whole, the whole panel. Uh, so the way you do that is you adjust the scale here. So you can also drag in the center here to move it kind of more freely, which is good. Um, and then once you like the position, you can press OK. And then I'm also going to insert it again because I kind of want this to wrap. So I'm going to insert another copy of it. And it's OK if it goes off. I'm just trying to line it up. So that... OK, that looks pretty good to me. Uh, I'm going to say OK and then I'm gonna finish sketch. So now we have these sketch lines like on top of our panel. Uh, so what we can do is we can extrude these out, which is really nice. Um, however, I am gonna just go into the sketch really quick and edit it because I wanna close this line. Otherwise we won't be able to extrude these things. So just a little bit of cleanup, but it's pretty easy to do, even with a screaming cat in the background. Okay, so now that everything's kind of closed up, we can finish the sketch, uh, and now we can start to extrude. Uh, so I think that I want, um, what I'm thinking about doing here, instead of extruding up, I kind of want to extrude down so we can do some layer shifts to make it look like the stars and lightning bolts are kind of recessed. So I think first I want to extrude the lightning bolts. I think I want them to be extruded the most. And you know what? I'm actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the stars cut through the panel 
and then I'm going to have the lightning bolts be um, a different layer color underneath the, uh, the default panel color. So let's actually cut the stars first. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit extrude and then select our stars. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just orbit so I can make sure I'm cutting through the panel. And I like to over exaggerate my cuts. It's not really totally necessary, but I like to do it. Uh, I'm going to press OK. So now we have this panel with these cut off stars, which is pretty cool. And I'm going to bring back our sketch uh, so we can still see everything. Uh, and now I'm going to take uh, the lightning bolts and I'm going to select all of I'm going to do an extrude. I'm going to select them. And if there's any little dots like this, you can select them to clean it up. There might be some speckles left over from the SVG process. And that's okay. You can just click on them and it makes the mistakes go away. Woo! Which is nice. I like how clean the sketch acts in this. Like, it's really nice and you're not having to like trace over stuff, which is cool. Which I've done in Fusion 360 and you can do, but like... This is just a lot easier. Okay, and that's all I'm going to... Oop, I forgot one up in the corner here. Okay, so that's all I'm going to select because I don't want it to go past into the holes here. I want it, I want to keep that kind of like... Empty. And now right now with the, the blue and the white and the red, it kind of reminds me of Ziggy Stardust. Um, so with this, I want to cut it like halfway uh, so we're going to have to kind of watch. So 10, mi 10 millimeters looks good. Yeah. I think it's 20 millimeters thick. So we want to do like halfway and press OK. We'll see how that looks. Fusion's thinking. OK. Did the thing. Uh, and now I'm going to hide the sketch so that we can see uh, what it what it looks like. And it looks good. One thing I'm going to do is I'm also going to extrude these walls on the side here because that will not print well. It will be too thin. Um, so I'm just going to knock them out. Oh, what? No. <laughs> why would you do that? Oh, okay. Right, why is it? it? seems to be going that way. Why would it cut that way? I want to cut this way. All right. Maybe now we can. <laughs> Weird. Sometimes I, I find you have to do that with Fusion. You have to just be like, okay, you know what? Never mind. I'm going to do it one at a time. I know that there's a better streamlined way to do stuff, but it's not working for me. So I'm going to do this. And that's okay. That's all right. Oh, see that little nubby? We're going to get that nubby. That was a hole that we missed. And now we can actually click to the surface for that so that it'll extrude the right distance. We don't want the guess. Uh, so now we can kind of inspect, see if there's any other spots we need to clean up. I'm not seeing them, so I think I think we're good. Um, yeah, I think we're good. So we have this body. We're gonna save it as an STL. Uh, I like to just keep it on medium. If you do a high, then you're just gonna run into more problems. I find. Uh, and so I'm gonna put it in my 3D printing folder. Lightning. Okay. All right, and we're gonna save. Okay, now we're going to go into our slicer. So now we're going to go into our slicer. We're going to import a panel. And it came out kind of small. Uh, uh, so for some reason, I've had issues with scaling with this model, even with uh, making it inches uh, in Fusion. Uh, but luckily, I know that for some reason, it, it the Y is it scales the Y to the X. So I've just been manually editing it. Um, but OK. Uh, but anyway, um, now we can do 10% infill on that, uh, and we're going to slice. Uh, doing a thinner layer height isn't going to help things with like detail because you're going up. If you printed it like vertically, that would kind of help, but not, not in this way. So anyway, so now we're going to slice. And you can see the art seems to have held up nicely, which is, which is good. Uh, and we're going to add a filament swap at the lightning bolt. This is so much easier now with the way the slicer is. So you can really see it visually like when the swap starts. So I think it'll be there. And you can also see it too. Like 
kind of changes the color so you can see what it's gonna look like. So I think that's gonna be pretty cool. Yeah. I think I might do a Ziggy Stardust color scheme for this one, maybe. All right, so now we're gonna slice it and print it and we'll see how it uh, comes out. All right, so here is the kind of accidentally David Bowie uh, lightning bolt and stars panel. Um, I did go with David Bowie colors, turquoise and blue, um, and I'm really excited with how it came out. I think it looks really nice. Um, the pattern, um, like having the stars be cut through um, and having the color change for lightning bolts, while still not adding to the thickness of this, it's still very thin, it's nice. Now I couldn't just stop there. Uh, I also decided to do a Sailor Moon inspired panel. Um, true Sailor Moon super fans will tell you that that is Usagi or Serena's, depending when you got into the anime. Um, Sailor Moon herself, uh, her comforter that's on her bed. Purple with bunnies and there's moons and stars. So I wanted to create that because it's like subtly Sailor Moon, um, but also kind of goes with the theme I'm coming up with these uh, these art panels on the Euro Rack. Uh, so it was the same process. Um, I brought in the image uh, to Fusion 360 after converting it to an SVG. Um, and then I made, the only difference here is there's no cut throughs. Everything's just at different um, layer heights. So the stars are the deepest cut, then the moon, and then the bunnies are actually extruded a little bit, just a smidge. Um, and that allowed me to do four color changes, which I'd never done before. Um, and it doesn't even look like I've added that much depth, really. It's just kind of gives a nice effect because it is still so thin. But started off with pink, then went to yellow, then the lovely lilac, um, and then the white for the bunnies. So I'm really digging this technique in general, um, and I hope that other people will find it to be handy as well. Uh, you don't have to just do your rack panels. You could do other things. I mean, enclosures could have this, or even if you're doing something that's like really like a practical print, you can make it a little funkier with this technique. Uh, but that's gonna do it for this video. Um, I'm not going to be putting the design files up for these because this isn't my art. I don't own this art, the, including the planet. I'm not that talented. Uh, so uh, I will link the panel down uh, in the description on Thingiverse. There's a couple different sizes, the 10 HP, but they had sizes two, four, six, eight, and 10. Uh, so you can remix your own, make your own, uh, if that's what you're into, or just take the art tip uh, and kind of go from there. But thank you for watching, uh, and until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.